Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nidhi and you're watching my series on how to become a cabin crew. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, uh, a lot of people who have been sending, up, sending me a lot of messages for their recent interviews, uh, especially the ones they have cleared with Singapore Airlines and uh, a few other airlines, so congratulations. And uh, for those uh, who are still trying, uh, and for those who are still on this journey, uh, keep watching the videos because uh, a lot of us share a lot of valuable information with all of you. But for today, we'll be talking about a very, very important topic and uh, any guesses? Yes, we'll be talking about the medical tests. Now, let's understand why uh, most airlines are so particular about conducting medical tests. Uh, being a cab crew, it's not just about uh, looking pretty and serving up in the air. It is a lot to do with uh, physical fitness as well because uh, you will be performing a lot of safety and security related duties. Uh, you will be required to carry out carrying out the emergency duties if there is any emergency on board. Uh, for example, if you have to ditch or you have to do, uh, you, well, not personally you, the pilots will be doing the, the emergency landing. Uh, but of course, you are the ones who will be in charge of taking care of the passengers and the whole procedure uh, in the aircraft itself. So uh, from uh, those perspectives, uh, having a physical fitness is very, very important and that is the reason why most airlines are so particular about doing uh, these medical tests. Most airlines, actually even before you apply for the job, usually will have a pre-application form and in that form sometimes they do ask you to declare if you have any medical condition that they need to be aware of. So uh, make sure that you truthfully declare uh, whatever you need to because you do not want to be in a situation where you are able to go through all the rounds and in the end because of uh, an untruthful declaration you actually get rejected and uh, uh, probably not able to apply for that airline ever again. So what basically happens is that once you actually go through all your rounds uh, at the end the company will tell you that you will have to undergo uh, certain medical rounds. Now they will either inform you via email or via phone call or uh, they will probably just tell you at the end of the interview itself that uh, you have been selected and you have to undergo the medical uh, tests. And uh, let's talk about uh, where and how many times do you have to go through these medical tests now. Now uh, if you're applying for a local airline within your country itself, for example in India if you're applying for Indigo Air or Jet Airways, you would most likely have to go through those medical tests only once because uh, the airline will uh, tell you what the tests you need to go through and once you clear them, uh, you will be able to join them. However, if you're applying for an international airline, which means that you have to relocate your base, uh, say for example, if you're applying for Emirates and you have to relocate to Dubai because that's where the base uh, is, then in that case, you might uh, and most likely you have to go through these medical tests twice. One would be in the home country itself and the second medical test will be in the country that you're relocating to. Also, please do take note that these uh, tests might differ. Uh, some airlines might be a bit more stringent with some tests and uh, some airlines might not conduct certain tests. So I'm just going to give you a very generic uh, information on this. So uh, some of the tests that you will have to go through would be uh, first and foremost your blood tests. Uh, and also your urine tests or your stool tests uh, because they just want to make, make sure that there is no abnormality in either of these and they want to make sure that uh, uh, these tests come out normal and uh, some airlines uh, do a full CT scan, some airlines might just ask you to do an x-ray, uh, there will definitely be a height and weight check as well. Most likely there will be a test for HIV because they do want to make sure that that is not positive. All airlines will put you through the vision test as well. gray area so we will have to let the medical team decide as to uh, how they deem fit this person based upon the number that, that they have for their vision uh, to be able to uh, get onto the team and get selected. One of the other tests that most uh, airline and medical personnel do conduct is basically doing a physical test and they'll be checking uh, your limbs, your legs, your hands, your spine, your neck uh, for any sort of pain so they'll be tapping basically uh, on especially on your bones 
uh, your knee, your elbow, to ensure that uh, there is no uh, pain in particular, and they usually tap on your spine as well. The airlines is, uh, are, are also very particular and they do want to check if you have any lumps. So uh, they might check uh, your breasts, uh, especially for uh, female, uh, and they might check your neck uh, because these are the two major areas that are prone uh, to having lumps. Uh, so they might check your body for that as well. So these are some of the generic medical tests that most airlines will actually put you through. What happens is basically, once you're able to clear these medical tests, uh, most likely uh, you should get a call once you clear these medical tests within two to three weeks. And uh, from there on, basically the process follows. But just to uh, give you a little more insight into this, uh, especially for people who are applying for international airlines, uh, when you're doing a medical test in your home country, it depends on the airline whether they'll be paying for it or not. Because in the case of Singapore Airlines, from what I've heard, uh, if for the basic test, basically, they do cover you. However, uh, if there is anything uh, that the doctor seems uh, to uh, think that you have to do extra to ensure that uh, they're, they're de they just want to have a deeper understanding of what's going on, then uh, for those tests, basically, you have to pay. But uh, once you uh, get into the country itself and relocate, they will definitely pay for all uh, the medical tests that they require you to do. And the rates basically uh, do not pay uh, for the tests that they need you to conduct uh, in their uh, in your home country. But uh, once you clear those medical tests and you basically go to their home country and relocate, then all the medical tests that they need you uh, they need you to basically do, they will uh, cover those. And basically, once you uh, do all your medical tests, the usual downtime uh, to get your results is uh, anything between uh, two to three weeks or maximum it could take up to a month. Uh, but be rest assured, uh, the airlines do definitely get back to people uh, and tell them whether they were able to clear the medical test or they were not able to clear the medical test. Uh, the only thing is they will not tell you why you were not able to clear your medical test. And that's about it. So once you're able to clear your medical test, uh, they will send you a letter for you to join them and the rest will be taken care of by them. So uh, this is something that I wanted to share with all of you. So I hope uh, you guys find this information valuable and uh, if you do, uh, please do like and share uh, with uh, your friends so that they can be more informed about this as well. And uh, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell for more uh, video updates. And in the meantime, stay pretty, stay handsome, and I love you guys.